Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's great to be able to gather on this beautiful fall day. The sun is shining, the leaves are coloring our eyes. And it is beautiful out. It's a nice day to be outside. And here we are inside worshiping God. So don't forget to spend some time outside. Enjoy God's creation, enjoy the blessing of friends and family. As we come together, let us enjoy God's holy presence as he comforts us, as he encourages us, and calls us into worship this morning. As we come together, let us remember uh, the congregation and leadership of Kenyan Presbyterian Church in Dunvegan as we uh, continue to pray for our presbytery. Let us turn our attention to the call to worship. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. God is present with us as we meet together with family and with friends. Jesus reminds us that when two or three are gathered together, he is present. Jesus helps us to order our times and our priorities so that we can live as people of God. We live and worship as people who have been redeemed through the grace of Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> oh. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing.
Let us come before the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Living God, we come as people trans transformed by your saving grace. You have been with your people from the first footsteps in the Garden of Eden to the present day. Not a moment has passed that you have not seen or been aware of. Every song that a bird sings and every chirping that comes at night is part of the song of your creation. All of creation is called to resonate with your will and more importantly, with you. Because in you we have life. In you we are able to be in relationship and to know what it is to be a family and to be loved as a friend. God of unconditional love and amazing grace, you see all the sins of our lives that are weighing us down, the sins that cause us to fear and stop being open to your calling and your will. We do our best to cover our sins and dress them up so that people don't notice them as clearly as, as we in our hearts and minds, as are in our hearts and minds. Sometimes we make our sins into objects of worship in our own eyes and in the lives of other people. Forgive us, Lord Jesus. We are sinful people who want to be free from our sins. We want to worship you, the one true God, instead of worshiping our sins. Help us to forgive others and treat them with the fullness of love that we are to live each day with. We pray this in your name, and we pray as Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. My friends, God is faithful and forgiving. We need his forgiveness to truly be free to live. We need his freedom to be able to flourish. The psalmist writes to us, reminding us of whom we praise and whom we worship and the forgiveness of sins that we need. In Psalm 103, verses 1 to 6, Praise the Lord my soul, all my inmost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. Who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. Amen. Let us pass the peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. <clears throat> and let us to turn to hymn number two, or 372. Praise him, praise him, praise him, Jesus, my blessed Redeemer.
and souls to be fed. We want your words to be felt in our bodies, not just seen. May your words take root and break through the hardness that has crept into our lives, that help us to resist your leading and your will. May your Holy Spirit minister in us with your holy word this day, in each day that we engage with you through your holy scriptures. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our response of psalm this morning comes from Psalm 8, verses 1 to 9. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies, to silence the foe and avenge them. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place. What is that mind that you are mindful of? You have made them for You have made them a little lower than the angels, and crowned them with glory and honor. All flocks and herds, and the animals of the wild. Lord our God, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Amen. I'd like to invite Kathy to come forward and to read from Mark chapter 10, verses 1 to 16. Jesus then left that place and went into the region of Judea and across the Jordan. Again, crowds of people came to him, as was his custom. He taught them. Some Pharisees came and tested him by asking, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? What did Moses command you? He replied. They said, Moses permitted a man to write a certificate of divorce and send her away. It was because your hearts were hard that Moses wrote you this law, Jesus replied. But at the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. When they were in the house again, the disciples asked Jesus about this. He answered, 
Anyone who divorces his wife and marries another woman commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another man, she commits adultery. The little children and Jesus. People were bringing the little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them, but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms, placed his hands on them, and blessed them. Thanks be to God for this reading of his word. Amen. The reading that we just had from Mark is a reading that is, can be very tough at times. It is tough because in our world there is brokenness. There have been broken lives, broken relationships, there has been broken people themselves have felt the brokenness of sin in their lives. In the first part, when we think about marriage, Marriage, as Paul writes, is, is to be an image of our relationship with God. We see this multiple times throughout the scriptures. It is to see that divine union, that self-giving love, the building up and the coming together. And yet, the reality is, is that sin has affected our lives. It has broken our relationship with God and even with each other. Both of the first part of the section we read on, on marriage and divorce, but also on the second part, talking about little children coming to God, is talking about, in its essence, our relationship with God. Both are trying to illuminate what it is to be in relationship itself. In the first part, we see Moses giving space for our brokenness. And Jesus recognizing the importance of it, but he's also not saying that we should aspire to the lowest standard but also but that we should be aspiring to the God-given image from the beginning, that we are to go back to that, to that picture of what God has instilled in us, not just what people have said we should be. The problem is, is that we keep lowering our standards. I remember having a t-shirt. It's when the Simpsons first came out a few years ago. There's a story to go with this t-shirt because I wore this t-shirt. It's, uh, and my grade seven teacher found it quite interesting because he looked at it and it was just after we had a math test. And he asked everyone, who do you think got the highest mark in the math test? There was the first part, there was a lot of uh, girls were mentioned. Then the teacher had to actually say that it wasn't a girl this time. It was actually a boy, because the girls were mostly smarter than us, but anyways, but that's beside the point. Still no one guessed who got the highest mark, and he comes up to me and he looks at my shirt, and on the shirt it says, if at first you don't succeed, lower your standards. <laughs> yes, I was the one who actually got the highest mark of the class. I only studied for one thing, and I did really good. That was my best math test, I was in grade seven. Anyways. But too often, we, we ascribe to that image of, if at first you don't succeed, lower your standards. If at first you don't succeed, change the criteria to fit you. And yet, God isn't inviting us to change the criteria 
He's inviting us into relationship with Him. He's inviting us to help, to be helped in our relationship with Him. That it is not just about whatever we feel comfortable with, but there's times where we have to work, we have to struggle, and we have to overcome. And it's interesting that these two are paired together. Because one is talking about our adults' relationship, relationships with each other, with God. After a great deal of learning. And here's the problem with learning. Who here ever had a really good influence? Who who here ever had a really good influence that was bad? And sometimes, that bad influence was a lot more fun to be around. And we took after those people. We took after what they were doing and what they wanted. And yet, Jesus contrasts how we order our lives, how we set priorities, how we set standards. And he says, truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. The beauty of little children is that For the most part, they haven't learned all our bad habits yet. I say yet because they're very observant. I I have a few kids that repeat things at the most inopportune times. And it's like, where did you get that? And they point. They're very honest at times too. They haven't learned what it is the fear, the fear of not having enough. They haven't learned to hate. They have learned to trust, to be open, to receive love, and to be loved. They've o- they're open to that deep relationship that sustains their lives. And then they get a little bit more independent. And then they get a lot more independent. (laughs) But Jesus is saying, have that freedom. Have that freedom to love and be loved. Have that freedom to experience God's grace. Have that wonder and curiosity and that desire to be in God's presence. Allow the joy and the beauty of that relationship to grow. And in that, you start to experience a new way of living. Because when we are are allowing ourselves to be closer to God, we learn from God. Like the children who watch their parents quite closely, who pick up all their good habits and the one or two things that would rather they not see, but they've seen quite clearly. Sometimes it is our vocabulary. Sometimes it is our way of speaking. Sometimes it is our sarcasm. Sometimes it is even our way of fearing. Hopefully, it is our way of faith also. Our way of trusting. Our way of helping. And hopefully we have spent enough time with Jesus that we have learned from him. Because Jesus, who did not order his life on the ways of people, because if he did, these, this nice little talk about the children would never have happened. Because the disciples rebuked the parents at first. 
They limited the parents from coming to speak with Jesus and allow Jesus to bless them. Almost saying that the children should be kept at a distance from God, even though they are gifts from God. Jesus reminds us that no matter what age we are, whether, whether we are single or married, he has time for each of us. He has time to be in relationship with us. He loves us. He demonstrates what it means to have faith like a child. He demonstrates what it means to have that strong relationship with his Heavenly Father. He demonstrates what it means to not just strive for the lowest possible standard, and if you don't meet that, change it. He invites us to set our standard on God. To set what it means to be loved on the one who has given and who has shown us what love is. What it means to be more than just ourselves, just people, but to be true children loved by God, children of God. To be children who are brought together in faith, who are called to live out this faith each and every day, to be able to walk in the ways of Christ, to be able to teach and allow others to see Christ in us and through us. Not to glorify ourselves. In other words, say, look at me, but to look at Christ. Allow people to see the love of God that transforms our hearts, our minds, our bodies, and our souls, that gives us that security to truly th flourish thrive, to grow, to be a blessing, to bring hope into the world around us. God recognizes our hardness of heart. God recognizes our struggles. God recognizes the problems that we face. And he hasn't given up on any of us yet. And he won't. He invites us into that deeper relationship where we can walk with his strength, where we can walk in his love, walk with his faithfulness, that we might truly be children of God each and every day of our lives. Amen. All righty. Announcements. Bible study tomorrow at 10 o'clock. No, two weeks. Uh, October 20th, we'll have baptism and, uh, baptism and communion. So we're going through the whole gamut of the, sa the sacraments. At least within the Presbyterian Church. The Catholic Church is a few extras, or a few more. Um, uh, we, we should sing Happy Birthday to somebody that turned 85 this week. Oh. There's a lasagna dinner uh, for St. Paul's Presbyterian Church. The information is on a poster out there, which I don't have the quite date, I think. 24th. That sounds about right. 
I was going to say the 17th, but I thought that was too early. And the 18th is a Friday, and I know it's on a Thursday, so the 24th seems about right. It's all about reasoning things. Any other announcements coming up? Let us. I don't know. It's all good. We're getting there. Let's take a moment in prayer. Gracious God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for your blessing. We thank you, Lord, that you that you call us into something more. That you don't just leave us where we are in our struggles, in our brokenness, but you invite us into the deep healing relationship that comes from being, being with you. Lord, you have blessed us with your grace. You have blessed us with Jesus. You have shown us what it means to be loved. And you help us to love, to love each other, to love you, to love ourselves also. Lord, help us through our daily struggles. Help us to be faithful to you, to not just lower the standards for our own liking, but to truly seek to follow you with all of our heart, mind, body, and soul, with all of our strength, with all of our being that we might glorify you and allow you to be seen in and through us. And gracious God, help us. Help us to wash away our sinfulness, to be able to see others as you see us, to be able to walk in your ways in the fullness of life, to be able to experience your grace and your mercy. Lord, we, we thank you for, for each day that you bless us with. Lord, we thank you for the people around us who have helped to enrich our lives. We thank you for your faithfulness in and through them. Lord, we pray, we pray for peace and healing. Healing on, on strained relationships. healing through war-torn areas. Lord, we pray for peace in the Middle East, peace in Gaza, peace in Lebanon, peace between Israel and Iran. Lord, transform our hearts that we would not live in fear, that we live in the fullness of your faithfulness. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to... I'll let you do the whole okay. thing. Uh, our mission moment today... Um, Chanda Kumari is a 16-year-old girl living in a rural village in India. She's the eldest of five siblings, and the financial strain weighs heavily on her family. Amid these daily struggles is the threat of child marriage, which remains a common practice in her village. Financial and social pressures, pressures led Chanda's parents to consider marrying her off despite her age. This all changed when her mother attended a community awareness session on child marriage hosted by PWSND's local partner. Chanda's mother shared with her husband what she learned during the session. Armed with knowledge about the legal age for marriage and the detrimental effects of child marriage, they decided to prioritize Chanda's education and seek other financial resources 
to prevent her early marriage. We don't always see the blessings of God in our lives. Sometimes we need to step out and give before we can realize what we truly have. May we give to God out of what we have been given and to see what God can do with our obedience and willingness to bless others. Let us give our tithes and offerings.
Lord, as people renewed by your love, transformed by your grace, and empowered to live in the miraculous blessing of family and friendship. May we seek to build up what you have given us and to make new friends as you lead us. Send us in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, Amen. Mm -hmm.